Now, when we're talking about routine coefficients, we mean Vietes results, right? Um, sum of roots, sum of roots two at a time, sum of roots three at a time, sum of roots however many at a time, all the way up until you get all of the roots, which we call the product of roots, right? So I want to show you a couple of harder applications. Like at the moment, you're used to questions like this, right? Uh, something like this. And here, based on those coefficients A, B, C, D, and D, you can say, all right, well, alpha plus beta plus gamma for this particular polynomial should be, well, in this case, minus B on A, and C on A, minus D on A, etc. We've generalized these patterns before, okay? Now, you guys have seen the questions where they say, okay, well, then can you find, for instance, uh, for this one to be, okay, something like this. You know, if you knew what A, B, and A, B, C, and D were, could you then go ahead and evaluate what alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared is? You guys know, it's just, it just involves some combination of minus B on A, C on A, and minus D on A, right? So we've seen them before. I'm going to call them the simpler applications, right? Today, we're going to look at kind of a bit of a different way of thinking about it. It's sort of looking at the problem from the other way around. We're going to form some new equations where the roots are related to the roots of this equation, but in different ways. So here's actually where we're going to start. We'll begin with this general cubic, and we'll say if it has the roots alpha, beta, and gamma, what we're going to do is we're going to form two new polynomial equations, uh, which have roots that are related to these roots. Okay, so we'll do a simple one first. Okay, so this is part. Um, form a polynomial, or this should have been before part A. Form a polynomial <laughs> with roots, dot, dot, dot. And for the first one, we're going to do, rather than alpha, beta, and gamma, what would happen if we had a polynomial that had roots that were exactly twice the size, twice the magnitude, I should say. So 2 alpha, 2 beta, and 2 gamma. Right? When we have a look at part B, we'll look at another different relationship to alpha and gamma. Now, what I want us to do is to see, if you go back to this original equation, um, it has been given to you in the form it equals zero. It's in general form. Okay? That means that if I want to, because it's not just an expression, I can actually do things to both sides. Okay? So to help us see what's going on, I want us to notice that if you take this guy and you divide through every term by A, Okay, you're going to get this polynomial. Okay? Now, what's useful about this is that we know what B on A, C on A, and D on A are in relation to these guys, right? We know exactly what they are in relation to what the roots are. Okay? For example, B on A, that's an easy one, right? We would normally say that the sum of roots is not B on A, but minus b on a, right? So this is the negative of the sum of the roots. So in fact, I can write that. I can say it's take away the sum of the roots, because I know what they are. I've just given them names, right? Alpha plus beta plus gamma. That's the coefficient of x squared. And generally speaking, for a polynomial of degree n, I can say the coefficient of the term x to the n minus 1 will always have the sum of the roots. Like it could be, um, the original one could be to the power of 7, and then the x to the 6 term will have the sum of roots as its coefficient, provided it's monic. Okay? The next bit, c on a, that's nice, the sign is the same, that is the sum of the roots in pairs. Right? So it's a sum of pairs. So there are three pairs that I can make between alpha, beta, and gamma. They are alpha, beta, alpha, beta, alpha, alpha gamma, gamma, alpha, beta, gamma, gamma, and beta, gamma. Right? So there is the sum of the pairs of roots, and that's the coefficient of x. The last bit, d on a, that is, I'm up to the last one. It is the opposite sign of the product of roots, yeah? So this is minus alpha, beta, gamma. Are you okay with that? Now, I can use this. I can take advantage of this. Because remembering that this is a general cubic. Every cubic looks like this. I can play this game. I can use this trick on every cubic. If I know what the roots are, right? If I know what the roots are, and in this case I do, then I can rewrite, I can make a new polynomial that fits that no matter what these conditions are. Okay? So here's the way I'm going to do it. Remembering that um, the particular alpha, beta, and gamma that I'm using are tied to these values in A, B, and C, and D. And I'm going to make a new equation. Okay? 
I'm going to go through one at a time. I want the sum, the sum of pairs, and the product. Okay? Except in this case, it's not alpha plus beta plus gamma. Right? The sum of roots is not alpha plus beta plus gamma. It's 2 alpha plus 2 beta plus 2 gamma. Do you see? I've got a new polynomial now. right? So it's got new roots, namely these guys. Okay? What's great about this, of course, is that this is integrally linked to the previous polynomial, the original one. right? This sum of roots is exactly double the sum of roots of the first polynomial. But I know what that alpha plus beta plus gamma is. What is it? It's just minus b on a, right? Like that's just the standard result. So this in fact is, uh, with the two out the front, it's minus two b on a. Are you okay with that? Now I can continue going through. I'm gonna use this to build this, okay, once I get there. So let's do the sum of the, yeah? That's the axis of Almost. No. Minus b on 2a. Oh. <laughs> so close. Um, okay, let's do the sum of pairs. Sum of roots. Sum of pairs. Um, here we go. Now be careful, right? So here's a pair of roots, right? So rather than alpha beta, I've got 2 alpha times 2 beta. So they both appear. So I'm actually, just to make sure I don't screw this up, I'm going to write it out in long form. So there's my first pair. Then here is my second pair. And here's my last pair. Okay, so you can see, it doesn't take that much imagination to see, I'm still going to get the same pairs of roots, the same three, but instead of just having one of each, I have four of each. So I'm going to take that four out the front. <coughs> okay, now again, this is useful, because I already know what the sum of pairs of roots should be. Based on the original equation, it's just going to be C on A. So putting that together with the four, I'm getting 4C on A here. Can you go ahead, can you do the product of roots? It's actually the easiest one. You could probably do it in one line. What is that product of roots? Alpha beta, A alpha beta gamma. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's this times this times this, right? Which is in fact 2 cubed alpha beta gamma. But we know what alpha, beta, gamma is from the original equation. It's minus d on a. Okay. So that gives me minus 8 d. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. So the power of like, say, 4 and 5, what would you call it? Uh, so I would say sum of roots, sum of pairs of roots, sum of triples of roots, uh, sum of quartets of roots. Pentoplets? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you just keep on going. I mean, the, the general way of saying it rather than using this language is to say sum of roots one at a time, sum of roots two at a time, sum of roots three at a time, and so on. Okay. Now, what I want you to do, and the, the critical thing here is that you don't confuse the original polynomial with the new polynomial that I'm writing. Okay? I have a new sum of roots, a new sum of pairs of roots, and a new product of roots. Each of these three numbers are going to fit here, here, and here. Do you see? Because this is a general cubic, right? Every cubic is going to be able to behave like this. So therefore, my new cubic should also perform the same way. Okay? It's just that my sum of roots happens to be that. So let's go ahead. We can say a new polynomial is um, I've crafted it so that it's monic, so I start with my x cubed. Then I take away, I take away the sum of the roots. So watch the double negative there, right? So this is minus 2b on a. That's the coefficient of x squared. Um, I've got my sum of roots two at a time, my sum of pairs, it's 4c on a. That's the coefficient of x. And then, excuse me, watch the double negative again, minus negative 8d on a. That thing is equal to zero, okay? Now, in some senses, I'm kind of done because all I had to do was form a polynomial. That's the polynomial. But we can tidy this up for two reasons. Number one, because it's a royal mess. Number two, because it's not in general form. Number three, to see if we can see some kind of pattern as to what doing this does to the new polynomial. Okay? So let's tidy this up a little bit. Uh, why did I divide through by A? Like, why did I introduce these fractions? Get it's so that I could see this. Do you remember that? Like that's to make it monic so that I could see this. But that's not in my interest. I actually wanted to go back to being without fractions. So I'm, the first thing I'm going to do is multiply everything through by a. And I might as well resolve all my double negatives at the same time. So I'm getting this. Mm 
OK, that's good. Now at this point, I notice something unusual is happening, which is that I've got powers of x, and then I have powers of 8. Do you, do you notice that? It's almost as though there's some kind of binomial thing happening that doesn't quite work out because this a, b, c, and d, they have nothing to do with, like, they're just completely random numbers, as you can see. Okay? So in order to get them, rather than powers of x decreasing and then powers of 2 increasing, if I get them to marry up to each other, then I can simplify this nicely. So I'm going to take every term and I'm going to divide through by 8. The reason I'm dividing through by 8 is because it's 2 cubed. Right, and you'll see what happens when I do this. So watch. I'm going to get a times x cubed on 8. I'm going to have b x squared on what? 4. c x on 2. Do you see what's happening? And then all that's left there is d. Okay. Now you can see, rather than being in opposite directions, the powers of x and the powers of 2, they marry up. Okay. So here's my last thing. I'm going to write this as x on 2 cubed, x on 2 squared, I've already got this one in x on 2, 2, and there's d hanging out in the end. So, I've successfully gotten to general form, uh, it looks much neater, and now my final question was, what does this have to do with this? Have a look, have a look, what's the relationship? When I double the roots, what happens to my polynomial? Look. They're all halved. Every variable term has to be halved. Of course. Of course it does. Because if I say something like, oh, um, can you give me like a version of this, right? You know where the roots are, right? They're at 0 pi and 2 pi. Can you give me a version of this where the roots are twice the magnitude? Instead of 0 pi and 2 pi, I want them at 0, 2 pi, and 4 pi. Well, you should stretch it out like that. It works exactly the same. Right? So this is just like mucking with frequency and period, except it, well, there's no frequency and period on a polynomial, but it's the same stretching effect. Okay? So therefore, generally speaking, right, that's, I guess, I, mean, I didn't call this P of X, but I'm going to call it P of X now. If you have some polynomial P of X, and you want its roots to, you want to form a new polynomial with roots, say, um, you know, K alpha, K beta, K gamma, then the new polynomial will be P of X on that, that coefficient was k, right? And that's why we have um, x okay. Is that quotable? Um, hmm. Pro probably no. not necessarily. I mean, can, you can see there's actually a fair bit of work to demonstrate and understanding to demonstrate to get there. Um, I think it's better to, just like with conics, it's, it's good to know that so that when you get there, you're like, oh yeah, of course. Like, I knew where I was heading. Rather than, remember how I introduced a whole bunch of steps in, you're like, why is he doing that? Like, why divide by that? It's like, well, now you know why, because I was heading there. 